Greetings. Uh, my name is Don Carpenter, and I'm a project engineer with Drummond Carpenter. Drummond Carpenter is a service disabled veteran owned small business that specializes in civil and environmental engineering and research. Uh, the work I'm going to be presenting you today was also facilitated by Rachel Pichek. Rachel is also an engineer with Drummond Carpenter uh, in the um, inside the watershed. She's up in the uh, tip of the mid area. So today we're going to be discussing the green stormwater infrastructure visioning for the city of Petoskey. But the first thing we wanted to do was really cover what is green stormwater infrastructure to kind of set the uh, stage for the types of tools in our toolbox when it comes to managing stormwater in a sustainable fashion and therefore keeping the receiving waters of the Great Lakes cleaner. So what is GSI? Right? Well, green infrastructure is uh, basically the alternative to gray infrastructure, right? So gray infrastructure is the concrete and the pipes and the things that facilitate stormwater management. Green infrastructure uses like vegetation and uses uh, healthy soils for basically mimicking mother nature, right? So we're basically going from a way to infiltrate stormwater, evapotranspirate uh, stormwater and, and using vegetation and soils to, to clean up the runoff from our, from our uh, impervious surfaces. So what are some of the green storm infrastructure techniques that are available to us? Well, uh, a, a big one and one that many people have already heard of is rain gardens, or they're sometimes referred to as bioretention cells and engineering lingo. We also can use bioswales or vegetated swales, so kind of open ditch concepts, slow that water down, infiltrate into the ground. Planter boxes are more common in, in urban areas where you might have tighter uh, infrastructure constraints, you know, then you might do more kind of vertical planter boxes. Uh, street trees and tree box filters are also kind of an, an urban or so downtown framework. Infiltration galleries and swales, permeable pavements and pavers. And these are all tools in our toolbox. I'm going to go into more detail as we go through. So first, what's a bioretention cell or a rain garden, right? So rain gardens tend to be homeowner features. These are a couple examples here from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. But basically when you're redirecting water from your roof or from your um, pavement, you know, your, your driveways, your sidewalks into slow depressional areas. And these low depressional areas are planted with native plants and those plants soak up the stormwater runoff and whatever doesn't uh, get evapotranspirated or taken up by the plants is infiltrated into the ground. And this is an alternative to that water running off of our sidewalks and our uh, right down into our streets, into our curb and gutters, and then straight out to, to the bay or, or to the lake or to the creek. So bioretention cells are, are basically kind of heavy engineered rain gardens. So whereas a rain garden is a, a, a more of a homeowner or a landscaping feature, a bioretention cell is going to have larger infrastructure. So for example, maybe curb cut inlets or larger overflow structures. You might have amended soils or under drains. So things that an engineer gets in there and, um, you know, kind of fine tunes the design parameters for an optimal storm event. Vegetated swales and bioswales. So these are basically kind of smaller um, rain garden features that instead of just being the receiving water or the low point where the water comes to, it's an opportunity for water to be moved along its length. So this would be like an, in, an uh, instead of curb and gutter that you might think of, you now are having water that moves from roads into these individual cells and then flows linearly along these cells to a low point or an outlet point. And so here's just several examples of both urban, suburban, and parking lot applications of bioswales. So planter boxes. So planter boxes are basically bioretention cells or rain gardens, but that are within walls. And they can be above ground or above grade, like this one right here at a school where the downspout used to just uh, move onto the sidewalk and, and straight into a catch basin. Instead, it's put into this very small feature, but every little bit counts when we're talking about runoff. Or you might have this type of feature. So this is basically a bio um, retention planter box. So it's below grade and you can see these little curb inlets or underground cuts there. So the water sheet flows across the, uh, across the sidewalks and then into these low line planters. Street trees and tree box filters. So these are actually different concepts. A street tree is kind of what a lot of people think of. They can be in residential neighborhoods, as you can see this one on the, on the left, or it can be in downtown neighborhoods on the one on the right. What makes a street tree is effectively being uh, one next to a street, but be a street tree tends to only capture the stormwater that it's intercepted by its canopy or the water that falls on it or immediately adjacent to it. 
And that's the difference between that and a tree box filter. A tree box filter still uses the tree, but then it has, um, it's at the point of an inlet. So water actually goes into the tree root structure, right? So it's not just taking the water that falls out of the sky onto it. It's taking water off the surrounding pavement. And it's being directed into that. And so from an underground point of view, then that water is infiltrating. You can also uh, do infiltration trenches. So this is actually in Traverse City. So you've got uh, sheet flow coming off of a parking lot going into porous pavers. But the porous paver technique here really then supports an infiltration trench underneath. So storm water will be in the stone. It'll be in this uh, matrix. And then it'll slowly infiltrate into the, to the ground. So in this case, it's infiltrating into this uh, cedar, kind of the cedar swamp adjacent to it. So uh, water can either enter an infiltration trench from above through a permeable surface, or it can be piped into an infiltration trench through kind of traditional perforated pipe. Infiltration galleries. Infiltration galleries is taking this trench concept, this smaller concept, and spreading it out over a very, very large area. So we, um, there's multiple infiltration galleries around the Grand Traverse Bay Area. So water is being collected through this header row. It's put into these individual uh, tanks. Um, when this construction is finished, this will be backfilled around it. But then this water then is uh, infiltrated in the ground. It's kind of cleaned up then by, by Mother Nature and the surrounding soils. So this is a technique that we've done uh, with regularity now, and, and we put this into a North Port as well as other communities, but it's combining this idea of a tree box filter and an infiltration trench. So water enters the infiltration trench tree box filter at individual trees, but then um, it's uh, connected underground uh, through a longer system. And like I so said, this is what we did in, in downtown North Port on, on Grand Traverse Bay. So people walking on the parking area, or sorry, people walking on the sidewalk above it, they don't realize that everything beneath them is kind of interconnected with stone and there's storm water throughout the system. They just see those sidewalks and, and the individual trees. So permeable pavement, I've already uh, hinted at that a couple of times. Permeable pavement can take several different, um, different uh, forms. One is permeable asphalt, so kind of a black asphalt surface. And, what happens here, this is like a traditional asphalt where water is then flowing onto a permeable asphalt road. This is traditional asphalt and this is permeable asphalt. So water sheet flows off of this into the parking stalls. And, and permeable asphalt has open void spaces that water can get into and then kind of infiltrate into the ground. And uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, it actually works really pretty well in the winter. So one of the issues with traditional asphalt is traditional asphalt uh, is not supposed to have any water in it at all. And so in the winter, when a little bit of water gets in there and it freezes, it starts to crack and that's what forms potholes. Well, this is almost like the texture of like a Rice Krispie treat. And so water, it's got void space. So any water that's in there does have room to freeze and thaw and, and expand and contract. So it doesn't break up as easily as long as there's good drainage underneath it. In addition, it can be below freezing as I can attest to on this particular day and still have water go through it because you do get a little bit of that thermal effect associated with the pavement. Another alternative is porous concrete. So here's a porous concrete driveway, a porous concrete walkway in conjunction with um, a couple of rain gardens on either side. Uh, basically, it, it's very similar to permeable asphalt in terms of how it performs. Water falls on it, water goes through it, still has that open void space. Uh, another technique we like quite a bit is concrete block pavers. This is different than just decorative pavers. So just decorative pavers might be cemented together or held together with a, a real tight, fine joint so that water can't go through it. Concrete block pavers for stormwater management have kind of more of an open grade system. This is in uh, Grand Rapids here, this paved drain system. Water sheet flows off of the traditional road onto this parking stalls and gets through these individual little openings. And the same thing with this. You've got openings uh, inside between these paver systems that the water infiltrates through. And they can also be uh, concrete blocks. So you might have a, a diamond pattern. So water goes through these openings in the middle, or in this case, you can't really see it because of the angle, but really these are like slots. So these are individual rows that are connected on a cross paver. So water goes through these slots. And this is over in Holland, Michigan. You can see this kind of loading dock and overflow parking that water can go through. And then this is just a mode. They actually mow this grass like they would in the other grass, even though it's a pavement service for parking. 